Everybody, please welcome Jason Reitman. Good to see you, brother. I'm awesome, dude. Yeah? Very well. What's happening? I'm in Toronto. What could be better? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, you get to live both lives, right? You get to do the time in America, but this is your home as well, so it must feel nice to be here. Yeah, I, uh, I'm like a double agent. I get to be a Canadian and an American. That's good. Are you better at being one or the other? When I'm in Canada, I like to say that I'm better at being a Canadian. Yeah, that's a smart <laughs> answer. Uh, the... Th this new film, I, mean, I love the film, I saw it, it um, it's, it's, it's a wonderful film, and I, I thought about how different this is going to be for you be, with, with a new film, a George Clooney film, because there's just a different universe that you're in now, so in a sense, as successful as Juno was, and as cool as Juno was mm -hmm. for you, it... I think it kind of put you in a very in a position you probably didn't expect to have to be in for your next film. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot more anticipation, which is strange. You know, I like to be the guy who's, you know, come from behind that you don't know about. And with my first two films, Thank You for Smoking and Juno, I had that going for me. No one really saw me coming. And uh, it's nice, because you get to surprise people with, you know, how good a film can be. But when they're waiting for it, it, it you can't help but get a little nervous, like... Uh, they, you know, they have these high anticipations and then you're only going to let people down. Yeah, sometimes watching, I mean, I don't go to movies to escape. I go to movies to kind of throw right into what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And there are parts of this film where I'm just like, oh, that's, that, that, like, Jesus, am I there? At, at what part am I? Because Clooney has a really interesting arc and it's, right. it's kind of sad and lonely for a lot of it. Most people when they make a well, film... Well, George, you're a sad and lonely guy. I mean... Incredibly. Uh... Incredibly. <laughs> Oh, Jason, you know me so well. Um, let's turn this around for no, a second. Let me ask you a few that. questions. Um, <laughs> when are you going to sell down, George? It's all these great Canadian girls. <laughs> what, are you trying to kill me here? What are you... <laughs> um, conversation for off the air. The, uh, <laughs> when people make movies, they, uh, they, they say, who's your star? And in a perfect world, most guys go, I want to get Clooney. Mm -hmm. And then, sure, everybody wants to get Clooney. Right. You got Clooney. How do you get George Clooney at this stage of his career right. to be in this film? I mean, this is a crazy story because I, I was writing it for George Clooney. I mean, in my heart, I always wanted uh, him to play the role, and uh, I had run into him on during the awards campaign of Juno, and I said to him, "I'm I'm writing a screenplay for you," and he kind of gave me a, "That's great. Let me know when it's done." And I'm sure you know, a hundred people say that to him every single day. Uh, but his agent kind of kept track of the script, and when I was getting close to finished, I told his agent, "Look, I'm either." a week away or a month away, but in the middle I'm taking a vacation with my wife, we're going to Italy, and uh, he said, oh, perfect, just bring it to him in Italy. I thought, <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I want to, like, like, visit him? I, it, doesn't he want to read it first? And I don't want to show up at his door. He's like, no, no, he loves having people over, it's going to be great. I said, I, oh, okay, and I, uh, and I got the script done, we sent it out to him, and we arrived at his home. Uh, in Como, and when we first got there, he wasn't even there. There was nobody there, and we got shown around the home, and then he arrived on a, a motorcycle, and uh, and we started talking, and we're, you know, we're halfway across the world, and one of the first things he says to me is, so what are you working on these days? <laughs> you had no idea. I'm like, I, well, there's a screenplay that, and he's like, oh, yeah, I gotta read that. And so now, <laughs> my wife and I are staying at his house, and we're just waiting, you know, we're waiting for the morning, the afternoon, and they just gonna say, oh, I read your script. Yeah, it's not very good. You know, you know I'm just waiting for that to happen. And uh, two days in, he just walked up to me and just said, it's great, I'm in. Just and, like that. Yeah, and uh, those four words changed my life. I mean, I mean I'll, I'll remember that for the rest of my life. And that night, for six hours, we just talked about the movie and uh, how we were gonna make it. And I, uh, I think you know this, like, I very rarely drink. If, ever and but when you're with him you kind of got a man up right and uh, and I, I this is not an exaggeration the two of us drank four bottles of wine over six hours oh and, that's gunned man and he can drink yeah. uh, he's Irish I uh, you know I'm Jewish I literally I, uh, uh, I, I I hardly made it and I just I yeah I remember just passing out around 3 30 in the morning you know not believing what had happened that day people talk a lot about your father and because of what he does in your relationship with your father but you never hear anybody think about your mother and mm -hmm. I'm curious you know what kind of director you are because of your mother I think I get my sense of humor from my mother I know that sounds strange because my father is such a successful comedy director, yeah. but my mom's really funny. Uh, is and she as funnier than your dad? Uh, she has a very dark sense of humor, and I think that's where uh, I, I get it from. I, I wish I could just pop up with an example right now, but that's the truth. Uh, my mom's, my mother's an exceptional woman, and uh, I don't think many people know this, but my mom was an up-and-coming 
a uh, Quebecois actress uh, uh, when she was, you know, in her late teens and early 20s. And my father was struggling to become a filmmaker, and she had actually made some money, and she helped pay for his first movie. And there you go. Wow, that's quite yeah. a story. Yeah. Is she still paying for his, his movies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just emotionally. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you, you worked on uh, Kindergarten Cop, right? Do you, like, do you yes. have a PA on that? Well, I was a PA, and I also have one line of dialogue yeah. in kindergarten. You don't have a clip of that, do you? No, I can find it, though. Oh, God. Uh, Let's roll it. I, <laughs> I, well, here's the thing. So my father, I think my father wanted to ensure that I would never become an actor. So in each one of his movies, through the worst moments of my puberty, he would give me one line of dialogue in each film. And at, at each time, I would think, oh, this is exciting. I'm going to be on screen. And only a year later would I realize how embarrassing embarrassing it is when your name stops being Jason and it starts being whatever the line is in the movie. And Kindergarten Cop is the worst example because uh, it's a scene in which I'm making out with a girl mm -hmm. and Arnold is in this school and there's a fire going on and he kicks down a door and he points the gun at the girl and I and I think my line is, oh, we thought it was a fire drill. And I, like, my <laughs> voice is cracking and we, we run out. And this was my first kiss. Um, <laughs> So imagine your father directing your first kiss. With Schwarzenegger and a gun. Pointed at you. That's kind of a great first kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you wonder why I have issues. Well, uh, fair enough, fair uh, enough. But if that's, why, if that's what he did to ensure you wouldn't be an actor, what did he do to ensure that you would be a director? Because you were going to be a doctor and decided not to. Yeah, you know, it's funny. He, he, neither of my parents ever said you should be a director. I mean, it was one of these kind of assumed things. Every time I was on set, crew people say, hey, one day I'm going to be working for you. And uh, for whatever reason, uh, I kind of knew I was supposed to be a director. And uh, you're right, I think I've told you before that I was so scared by it. I was so intimidated by the fact uh, that I would be the son of Ivan Reitman. And I know what people think of the son of famous, or the children of famous filmmakers. The presumption is you're talentless and Usually you have a drug or alcohol problem. I mean... Uh, <laughs> and soon a reality show. <laughs> exactly. And I, I thought, well, why would I ever attempt a profession in which going in, people are going to think the worst of me, and in all probability, I'll just live in my father's shadow. And so I went to school, and I went pre-med thinking, well, no one ever says, oh, doctor, you couldn't do any better than that. I thought, well, <laughs> no one ever questioned that decision. And I was... I'm a smart guy, but I was doing awful. I was at school, and I was... I was uh, basically failing out and my father came to see me and he said what are you doing and I told him I said you know I thought I'd be a doctor and uh, no one ever questioned that and he said why I said, I'm just I'm scared and he said uh, look you're a storyteller you have to follow your heart and uh, in that moment I think my father became the first parent to ever convince their child not to become a doctor and rather become a <laughs> filmmaker <laughs> But again, you have to make your own name. And, I mean, with Juno, that, and thank you for smoking people talking about it. Juno, thank God I'm such a good director. Thank because, God, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just be just commercials. I know I was, I was down with you when you had a chance to uh, direct a Foo Fighters video, and it never happened. Oh, oh you want to hear a worse one? Yeah. Worse than that, because that's pretty good. No, it's worse than that. Nike, Kobe, Kobe in red shoes, dodging a bull like a bullfighter. And you'd asked you to direct that. And I couldn't do it. Your priority. I know. Wow. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because you're busy doing Up in the Air, right? I was making a movie. All right, Jason's new film is called Up in the Air. Jason Reitman, everyone. <laughs>